the obelisk. The obelisk is the key. Jerry, you stay focused on getting I'm, us started. <laughs> we're live. Be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> Greetings and salutations, my lovelies. Welcome to the obelisk. Uh, tonight's guest is a cult priestess, someone who asked to be on the show, but we love having her. So hopefully she'll bring up cool topics. We didn't even talk about what we're going to talk about, so it'll be a surprise to me and you. Welcome, <laughs> Hopi. Nish, how you doing? Excellent. And a cult priestess never needs any, uh, no outline. She could talk about anything. Oh, That's what we love about her. I know. I'm just, I didn't even have an outline. I don't even know what the hell's going to happen. So. <laughs> we never have one anyway. And, and I'm here for it. That's all I'm saying. That's right. Miss a cult priestess, how are you? It's been a minute since you've been on the show. Yeah, I did request to come on the show. <laughs> I was like, hey, Jerry, can I be on the show, please? And uh, he booked me the same day. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. And uh, I'm just excited to be here because this is the most unique talk that I get to do. I love that. I, I really, I find that that's a great compliment, actually. You get to let your hair down, girl, in different ways. Exactly. Precisely. <laughs> And, and be a weirdo and, and explore that side of myself that I don't give myself permission to do on normal shows. Oh, girl. We only allow weirdos <laughs> on the show. So. I feel like most of your audience is hip to what's going on, is hip to even the spirituality, and I don't have to start from 101, and we can get oh. weird, and they can follow oh, yeah. with us. Oh, yeah. Oh, Absolutely. Yeah. We, that's what we've cultivated that. And, you know, as the things keep happening as the time keeps moving on that is staying true we are we're keeping it true true a lot of people are caving right now oh Cold girl pieces. are you noticing it yeah um but i've noticed i've always had that it's just you know understand like i've always seen the false teachings the false lighters and mm -hmm. Passing along like politically correct spirituality really just works for the United Nations and the New World Order. And so I've seen it this whole time, but I do see it's being revealed more for everyone else to see. And it is exciting. So, yeah, thanks for bringing that up. Also, I want to shout out in the chat, Christy Bray, my very good friend who just helped me move a ton of furniture and was very generous coming here all the way from Cincinnati. And also Freeman Fly for helping me also move furniture. <laughs> And he's, gotta love he's friends listening. like that yeah, frame and... and friends friends like that that will help you move these are friends hey, yeah so we've you... been friends since high school it's really awesome feel free to send him the zoom link oh wow yeah um mm -hmm. he doesn't like being put on the spot though. no he hates that <laughs> yeah it's like the, the he's answer. probably like i'm going to turn this off if they call I me know, <laughs> now uh, you're I, all you're i've said feel free, that's all it, Freeman, you are right. Just lurk and listen. Mm. Um, sure. So let's let's get down with it, y'all. I, I got let's something. I got a topic too. So whenever oh, okay, you're, whenever hey, let's you start to. with it. Let's start with it, Jer. Did you see the Schumann residence? Uh -huh. Yeah, Christy showed it to me. That picture. She was freaking out. Yeah, she's like, "Oh my God, look at the Schumann residence!" And then I so, was like, yeah, "That's interesting." <laughs> my my thinking on this, if it's. This, an idea I had put up, this was on my thinking. It's an idea I had about it. What could it be? If it's not a software glitch, if it's not a sensor glitch, if it's an actual pattern that the, the Schumann resonance is making, what if it's some kind of... The analogy I drew was, what if human consciousness has reached that hundredth monkey effect point? And we we all synced up, and that's what it looks like now. Interesting. So, like musical notes in a symphony. How about cymatics? Can you, can you explain it that way through music? Because cymatics is musical. Yeah. Um, can I? I mean, would I explain it that way, or can I? Can you? For those of us <clears throat> who need something to hold on to. <laughs> okay. Here's a really good example of it. Um, if you ever use a, uh, a computer program to write music, 
uh, especially something like director where you're drawing um, note to note so you put a note on a bar and then you draw a line to the next note so it defines the duration and the pitch to shift it down if you're going to do that you know picture a musical bar if you look at that Schumann resonance pattern it looks like one of those computer displays of digital music precisely that's why i wanted you to explain it musically oh, okay. yeah but i there's I, I there's don't enough there's a wrench in there's a i'm gonna throw a wrench into this so i don't know if you follow yeah, um that was a thought not like my theory on no, no, no. I'm just, I'm, I'm throwing another angle toss, over here. Toss it a bit. Toss it off. Okay. So I don't know if you follow Museum of Tarot and that's out in your neck of the woods. Close, not that close to you, occult priestess, but he's out on, out in the South over there, I think in Tennessee. Anyway, um, he put out a couple videos on his TikTok and, you know, I'm a big fan. Uh, he, this is a neuroscientist. This man does real work, real psychic work real neuro as far as the real stuff, not like the woo woo, not the um, grave digger types and, and all that. So he was saying that, and he studies this stuff. He's in the field of this stuff. So it wasn't the Schumann resonance across the realm. So the other places that measure it didn't have this anomaly. And he said, oftentimes storms and thunderstorms create this but the one that we've all been seeing had to be something localized for it to affect it that way so and i'll let you all go there and check out he's got two two cheeky videos one cheeky video and then another one explaining it but he's very uh, brass tacks about things and i appreciate that a lot however looking at that grid with this information that something localized to the one we saw those the pattern and i saw some people pulling out specific um chunks of the pattern like just uh i guess almost like thumbnails the geometric shaping looks to me like Merkabas more than anything is what I was seeing. And I posted that in the key base because I found it absolutely fascinating to look at that two dimensional form of a Merkaba. I know other people are talking DNA and all this, but it's interesting just for that, but it wasn't across the whole realm. It was just specific to the main one we watch and you can pull up those images from across the realm at the other, um, stations that measure it what part of the world did it take place in the one that we always see localized here so uh, and uh, you'd have to we'd have to check that that video again but the one in russia didn't record it and i think the one in england didn't record it so i think we we're looking at one localized but for us over here in the united states and considering so there's deep woo in this so this kind of shatters a lot of other stuff people are talking about, but I think to just consider the options and consider the fact that there's an extra amount of strangeness going on in the United States. I think we can all kind of agree on that. And um, a lot of it does look to me like it's radiation through frequency and all this other stuff. So it it's interesting. I'm just throwing, like I said, I'm throwing a wrench in the whole whole thing, just saying stop, 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 and then check out this data and then move forward. That's all. But, Jer, I love your theory. Yeah, it was just a thought. And, I mean, that just could be part of it, too. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. To me, it's all on the table. And yeah. the deeper the woo, the better. So. <laughs> um, but that, that came to light. And with that information, I was like, oh, because I looked at the other the other places and um, it, it all that registered were storms and stuff. So it was, it was just interesting. And I learned that I didn't I actually did not know that. Sweet. It's always good, good to learn. Good for you, Nish. I know. So, so many I learned seem, it something. <laughs> so, so many things seem to be converging right now. It's like. It feels like well, we're there's coming no doubt to ahead. Yeah, Sounds like there's... you might want an astrologer on the show, too. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Anyway. Well, Robert <clears throat> Phoenix says to buckle your seatbelts starting July 25th. So we're we're getting close to that date. And then for like, I think the next 19 months, 
it's going to be one of those rides as we move in to the closing of the tw- the event that started in 2017 with the, eclipse. the great eclipse season. Yeah, yeah the, the X over wild. the spot. Yeah, so we're closing that off on April. So we'll have that one in October and then April, and that's X marks the spot right over there in, what, Texas and Oklahoma, right in that area? Somewhere like that. Yeah. All so. Right. It's going to be interesting. Mr. Colt Priestess, what do you think and about all just that? Just a quick one that corresponds with Cliff High talking about the quote-unquote Big Ugly, his prediction about shit going south. Anyway, go ahead. So um, you can see I've been putting a lot of my thoughts on my Twitter, and you can follow me at Occult Priestess on Twitter. And on June 18th, I was saying, I feel serious rising a whole month early. Mm. The crazy in the summer are the dog days, right? And that's the serious is the dog star. So I have a big intuition that we're feeling the crazy early. And I don't know if there's like some kind of deflection that another star is giving light and helping serious reach us. But on the 20th, I made a public service announcement. And I only do those when I get like a huge call from above upstairs telling me, Hey, this is what you need to tell the people. And so that's one of these. And I said, this year is all about you. This is the year to know thyself. God has given us a grace period in the eye of the storm. Take advantage of this time healer, heal thyself. We are going to need all the love we can get. And the DJ sends you the Sisters of Mercy more. <laughs> <laughs> and it's all about all the love you can get, baby. And he says, like, I don't know why you need, you just get by with a little understanding. Well, I need more. I need all the love I can get. And I really feel like we need to be in that mental space of self-love and self-healing. This is the year of the rabbit. And in the sky, the rabbit is near Sirius, the dog star. But in the Chinese zodiac, the year of the rabbit is supposed to be chill and calm. And I believe the only reason we have chill and calm right now is that great from heaven and above. Get to know thyself because this is the last time before things really start. The end of the end will be. Did you hear what Freeman said, uh, Jerry? I heard what you said, what Freeman said. Yeah, well, it's a text, so. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> we should be back now. Sorry, everyone. My uh, my internet died, and then my router wouldn't boot up, so I had to reboot it. And alleged... But we left on suspicious, yes. or auspicious, auspicious. <laughs> the end of the end of the end, and then it dies. It was just amazing. From a cult priestess. <laughs> what I think. speak is truth. <laughs> There's little proof for all of you, and you can have your little magical experience by going to a callpriestess.com <laughs> and your appointment today. Thank you so much. <laughs> so I guess we're done here, right? <laughs> oh my goodness. What what a night. I had trouble giving in. Wow. So are are we confirmed? Are people saying they can hear us? Yep. Hey, you got a tip, you guys. Yay. Uh, Thank you for that super chat, Marie. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I don't know the last time we got anything from. It's been at least two years. Wow. (laughs) Tip your hostesses. (laughs) It's at least been two. At least that's what it's been for me on here. You mean like cash payouts? Yeah. From uh, from you through through this. I I think. I think I just got one, so I'll send you some money. Yes, yeah, it's, it's definitely been uh, at least two years. Well, they they only give you uh, when you get to a hundred bucks is when you can get, when they pass when they disperse it. So hallelujah! Up, up until Thank that you, point, everyone. you get nothing, and it's a hundred bucks from revenue from. So we've made a hundred bucks finally in the last year. Mm-hmm. In in the in the last two years, and whatever. <laughs> since the last payment we're, you know, we're still out here we're still out here so let's get back to um miss occult priestess see if we can shut this down again so <laughs> do not challenge me <laughs> so this this is profound these are profound times and the messaging is right on on target with the way 
many of us are feeling. And this is stuff that I keep saying as well, that it's happening. It's not down the road. You know, so many other people are kicking the can down the road 20 years and stuff. No, you've got to get prepared now. And this is a thing you've got to get prepared with self. And it's imperative. This is the crossroad. We are at the crossroad. Don't you agree? Definitely. And yeah, happy solstice to everyone out there. We having the our summer celebration. So I just want to say hi to all the pagans out there. And this is a time of excellent time to do magic. And even for the next three days, yes. and I suggest you do magic to know thyself. Yes. In fact, I would say go ahead and get the original know thyself uh, meaning above the Oracle of Delphi. You spell it in the ancient Greek and you put that on a white candle and you pray to whichever God you believe in and ask to know thyself because this is the time. The soldiers of our past, some of the lahad of you are spiritual warriors. You have a sword in your spine. And that sword comes out in times like these. We're not quite there yet. Give us a year. And I do believe there's going to be another illness, more lockdowns and things like that. It's all coming back. It's all going to be recycled. But I was actually watching, this is pertinent, a 1940s house where these British people in two, the year 2000 had to live like it was 1940s British war in England and their food rationing, the blackouts, which were very intense. If you were lighting a cigarette on the street, you could get arrested because you're in a blackout. So everything has to be black in the entire neighborhood. And a lot of it was virtue sigl signaling everything we saw with COVID during this wartime in the 1940s. So this cycle does repeat. And as generations, we do go through these times of thick darkness and we have to survive through them. So I do say educate yourself about the past. Obviously, if you don't know the past, then you're going to repeat it. So victory gardens were a thing for a reason. Growing your own food is a thing for a reason. But beyond all of that, anything that you can do for your physical body, what's really important is your soul. The entire reason you incarnated on this planet was to learn the, the lessons of earth and to grow your soul from lead to gold. So it it's important to gather your water, you know, be the good squirrel. And make sure your nest is fine for winter. But if your soul isn't in the right place, it really doesn't matter how much preparation you've done because you're here for one thing and one thing only, and that is to know thyself. The beauty of knowing thyself has never been spoken of really on YouTube. <laughs> the beauty of knowing thyself is that you know God as you discover what unique, beautiful, creative creature you are, which this world keeps you from doing. Everything is designed to keep you from doing that. So once you can get into that, you actually know the divine, and then you realize you are part of the divine, and then you feel divine. So it is very important that we're all working on this. Okay, I'm backing up. So mode it be. <laughs> Bless it be, girlfriend. <laughs> That's right. I think, you know, this is spot on, and it's it should have always been the focus is growth and what doing here and the folly of this realm, the carnality, which we've all enjoyed one way or another is great, but to be side railed by it, to be sidetracked by it is it. I think that's one of the lessons is to learn to walk that center line and martial arts training certainly teaches us this, the internal yeah, martial arts. Because it's a mindfulness you know, and, and it's the knowing thyself is part of mindfulness, which is being aware, observing your thoughts. How many people have a, a, some people don't even have a voice in their head. It's totally blank and you can hear a pin drop in their head. That scares me. <laughs> but then there's the chatty patties in their head that have their entire family talking to them all the time, family, friends, like they never get any psychic peace. So there is a lot in the mental realm to be dealing with before you can even break through to a silent, serene meditation. 
it takes a lot of work just to get to that point. It, it's, it's interesting. I, on the meditations I do at the speakeasy in the, in the second gate, I call them wander ponders. Um, the thing that I'm always trying to convey to people when they're getting into dead stillness is don't try and push the chatter away. Let the chatter be there and move away of its own accord. Don't interact with it. Just let it be. And it will go away. Precisely. And that's being in that oneness state with something divine because it's easier to do it with a partner. And if you're honestly, atheists will have a very hard time meditating because they won't get any help. <laughs> I do believe that the spirit realm is part of our psychic world and everyone is in touch with it. But the more you work with it, the more you open your heart to it, the more you trust and agree with it. You're going to be taught by spirit teachers, by nature teachers. Fishermen know this. You know, anybody who works with nature knows it talks to you. It heals you. And that also goes for spirit guides, angels, or whatever else you want to call things beyond this realm that we cannot see with our physical eyes. They are waiting. And this is the time that they've been preparing for to help us. This is the time that they, they're they waiting for the humans to give the call to heaven. And that's very different than heaven calling earth. You know what I mean? Does that make sense? Yes. yes. <laughs> we yeah, need to so call heaven talk, into us. Let's talk the unseen world. So- mm -hmm. What are you sensing over there lately? What's going on? I mean, you just gave us a taste of it, but as above, so below, basically, right? There's there's all kinds of stuff happening here, which means these emanations, these waveforms, this stuff that's going on, this seems really hellish down here. It's got to have a counterpart going somewhere because of the nature of duality, which this realm really is. And, and we can talk about that as heaven versus hell or however, whatever template you need, but there's, there's a, there's a magnetic aspect here with the positive and negative forces. We could go Star Trek, Star Wars. What, what's going on in the other side on okay. the other side? Well, let's call it like Manly P. Hall called it the mental realm. So let's not get confused with the higher realms of gods and goddesses and beauty and light. Let's call it right. okay. mental realm of human. It's the collective unconscious. So, so many of us for so many years are fighting against the new world order, UN agendas and, you know, the baddies, the physical manifestation of evil, the people we know their names. Uh, the bloodlines that we know, we fight against them <clears throat> with words and podcasts and whatever way we can. But the actual enemy, they're not the actual enemy. They're part of the problem. So we came here to learn, right? <laughs> Keep that in mind as I say this. The actual enemy is the collective unconscious that is sick. The collective unconscious is the part of humanity that actually can manifest things as a collective, right? So if you're a really good spell crafter, you can manage things and manifest them in your own way at your altar. But there's a collective consciousness that has been driven by social engineering, Disney, Edward Bernays, Freud, German doctors of all sorts <laughs> throughout history. Rockefellers. Um, back to black magicians way before that and back to Rome before that. So for all of this time, we've had the darkness working on us. So what does that mean? Darkness working on us is we, we must look at ourselves as plants, right? Honestly, we really do. The consciousness grows like a flower and it blooms or it dies. So to bloom a flower, you must have dirt. You must have darkness. You must have yin energies. And that energy on this planet also has a sliver of what we call evil or darkness in it. Like the actual potent essence of evil has manifested in this world. And it is to grow the soul like a flower. It is the elements that we need to grow the soul from lead to gold. So I hope that all makes sense. But 
in the Hunger Games, they told Katniss, remember who the real enemy is. Of course, the enemy of all is evil in and of itself. However, the collective unconscious has been hijacked by all of this brainwashing. And now that's our enemy as well. And it's an existential, I suppose, as you could say, enemy, because only a drop of pure wisdom that makes ripples in the pool of the collective unconscious can heal this. This is a divine healing that must happen. Like, okay, kids, all of the flowers that are going to bloom have bloomed. So I'm going to put in this drop of divine wisdom into the collective unconscious and the flowers that didn't bloom are going to feel and understand and go through this, this experience of a true death. Um, William Blake, the poet call it the second death, the satanic death. And that's a, that you don't come back from, you know, it's like, and then those flowers that are left will be in that higher vibration because they were able to integrate that wisdom. And hopefully at that point, we will be going from the lead to the gold. Gold in spiritual terms does, in Christian terms, does talk about the a harvest of the wheat. That's actually the gold of hermetics. So even wheat is gold, you see. So it's found throughout many different uh, spiritual teachings that the gold is the goal. All right, I'm stepping back. So when we're looking at this on a physical level, in our physical bodies and the symptoms people are going through right now, because a lot of people are really talking about stuff they're going through. There's a lot of suffering going on. There's a lot of uh, sleepless nights. There are a lot of uh, nervous people. There's a lot of predatorial energy out there. Let's look at some of this. So are people, as, as everything's shifting, as we're getting into the gnosis of self, as we're moving through the refinement of our soul, what can people attribute to that physically? How is that playing out? That's the thing about being a, a priestess and being in the astral so much is that the physical never really registered with me much. I could never say, oh my gosh, this that psychic thing is happening because this physical thing happened. As you know, the way that things filter down to earth, they come from a very high pure state all the way down into finally the physical. So I've always caught things before they got to the physical. So I never associated the physical with the psychic body. I hope that makes sense. It does, but I want to get this to ground level for people that it is moving through to the physical body. The and thing that you're describing is the dark night of the soul, which happens hopefully every lifetime. Well, I could argue that actually, but I, I do, I do, I do agree though with the dark night of the soul. And you know, a lot of times the dark night of the soul really lines up with Saturn. Yeah, and sure. and this and the Saturn returns at twenty seven and fifty six and respectively, but it can be triggered by anything. But what I want to get is the common folk out there that don't have this kind of language like you and I do, that may be listening in and they're they're actually having restless nights, they're having paranoia attacks, their their skin's itching, they're having headaches out of nowhere, all this physical stuff that is happening to people. And I know because, well, you know, you're in uh, key base and then I collect a lot of this information uh, because I put myself out there to collect this information. So I'm, I'm hearing just crazy amounts of congruence, uh, congruence in these stories. A lot of people are suffering a cult priestess physically. And these are, this is side, this is a side note here. A lot of them are not people that were bitten. So this right, is right, right. No, I didn't think else. you were talking about that. Yeah. <laughs> but it, what I keep seeing in my head as you're saying this, which is how I work, is the plagues of Egypt. Could you elaborate? So in, again, Christian Bible story, um, 
God smited the Egyptians and brought on plagues. Were there seven of them? <laughs> Funny. Seven deadly sins, seven plagues. Yeah, seven is always that number. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. But, you know, my point is, if the collective is sick, even in a small tribe, if the collective is sick, they kill each other. That's how it works. And that's a very dangerous place to be in history. And that's, I think, what you're feeling is we will kill each other if things go too far. The predator that you talked about is in man. It's the animal part of man. And usually when man is scared and not spiritually inclined, he turns into the animal and there's no more man left. I 100% agree with you there. And it's it's in uh, other religions. You know, pagans understand this for sure. And it, it's there. It's also representative on a soul level of an initiation, too. I love that you brought that up. Oh, my God, yeah. because that's what all this is. It's a big fat initiation. <laughs> it is. It is indeed. Why don't you bring us into some gnosis on that? Can I say Sweet. something well, real quick? Sorry. Yes. Yes, Jerry, go ahead. So um, I think also we've been preconditioned, I don't want to say programmed, for something bad, for it to be bad through, say, like shows like, you know, Walking Dead or pick any apocalypse, post-apocalypse movie where there's survival and lots of death and bad shit goes down. I mean, for the last 20 years, that's pretty much dominated entertainment. So I think, I think the subconscious is trying to program us to expect that. Well, it's, it's who rules the subconscious through the media, through the books, right, through, right, right. so that's just social engineering. In my opinion, it's, it's not some divine force doing it. It's, it's definitely a negative force working through these bloodlines is what I would think, what I would say. And the I, and I agree. And the only thing I want to add to that is that, <clears throat> that the ideas for these shows and the scripts and the, the creativity is being driven from subconscious. From well, I think they are literally paid, like, especially uh, <laughs> the science fiction guys like Robert Anton Wilson literally paid to do a narrative. Like, here is your objective. You need to make these kids think these things, make them think oh. about UFOs, make them think, think about other planets. And they did it to David Bowie, Starman. There's so many, you know, I could go on a tirade, but I won't. But you understand it is our culture for a reason. And yes. Rockefeller, actually, if you go to the Rockefeller documents, I've tweeted them several times. Mm -hmm. There's a picture of Rockefeller, one of the brothers, with all of these new agers like Dr. Stephen Greer and mm -hmm. Linda Moulton Howe. So I know they got paychecks to do certain things to, sure. to feed these yeah. narratives. But, but I'm, my point's still kind of valid. I, you know, the idea to do this, to go in that direction, that the people who are directing it got it from somewhere evil i would say because it does go black back to black magic mm -hmm. in solomon who okay. raised demons okay and cursed I'm, his bloodline. i'm way off then you go ahead and talk you're not you're... off at all go. i think that it's helping the story it's helping tell the whole thing all right so anyway you were about to say something that i've totally forgotten now and i apologize oh let's just keep nish rolling, nish, nish asked you a question about go into something all right ask the audience remember what we're going to talk about <laughs> so so let's let's move forward with the um so we've got the seven plagues and we have all this happening and then we bring in solomon and one of the things that is is easy to look out and see is how demon infested the world looks and i'm using demon infested because that's the way it looks to me and i think a lot of people don't fully understand what what demons are let's go there i love explaining what demons are yeah let's take it away girl great so let's go back to ancient greek my favorite place right <laughs> so there's demon d-e-m-o-n versus the opposite daemon d-a-e-m-o-n so there is the concept of higher self you yourself are your ego personal self. You have a personality. You have a mom. You live on a street. It has a name. There is a part of you that is your soul. 
that is always observing, always with you. And I see it as above me in a higher realm, looking down and interacting with me. This is what is known as the higher self, the perfected self that helps guide us through this lifetime. What you are trying to do, how do you get from lead to gold, right? What you, the goal is, is to have your higher self become an angelic right? And there's even a, a saying, may our higher angels take over. And that's exactly what that is. So demon and daemon, your daemon perfected self. And when you're working towards gold, you will finally become an angelic self inside your physical body. So more like Christ, if you will, or Buddha, anointed, awakened, enlightened. If you're working on the other path, and you're agreeing with darkness and you're manipulating and lying and doing anything to get what you want, then you're agreeing with the ego, which also agrees with the demonic darkness. And the more you do that, the more you will become a demon. Does that explain it all? Beautifully. And so let's talk about the stages of possession. Whoa, well, uh, what was that movie that just came out? I want to say erroneous. That is not what the film is. Nefarious. <laughs> Thank Ooh. you. It's erroneous. That must Ooh, have been my spirit guide. A, <laughs> that nefarious one. Oh, my goodness. Everyone's talking about it, dude. But you remember Dr. Uh, Malachi Martin? Oh, yes, of course. So Father brilliant. Malachi Martin. Is yeah. he a doctor, too? <laughs> uh, he. Who knows? He could be with Art Bell, all that. Yes. Yes. So you guys, Malachi Martin might as well have written that film, really, because the hours and hours and hours with Art Bell, which I have spent listening to him over and over. He was the exorcist. He was the guy who could explain everything that was going on with possession in a Christian way. Right. So he was using bad angels and good angels for, as his language. But the truth is, possession is possession, and it happens all over the planet. And we just have different narratives to explain what it is. Absolutely. And the thing is, it's it's rampant. So I I am absolutely, every time I go out into the outer world to do whatever I need to do, where I'm at now is everything is uncanny valley. Everything. It is, it's so strange i mean i'm having people at the market ask me what do you do with lettuce i'm i'm going so everyone they look normal they sound normal they dress normal but then they they saying strange things like they're not familiar with stuff so if you're working in a supermarket and you're asking me what you do with lettuce i don't know you know, and I got that with coconut milk and other things. It wasn't like, what are your recipes? They're just like, what do you do with this? And holding it at me. And I'm, you know, and I, right now I'm in that invasion of the body snatchers mode where I go, I play the game, the gray man game. And part of that gray man game is, is participating on that level. And so this is what I'm seeing. I'm seeing the dead eyes everywhere. They've lost the spirit of God in them or this, you know, the divine spark. Yeah. <clears throat> We've been talking about this this week, uh, Christy and, and Freeman were both over and we actually had this deep conversation about now we call them non-player characters, NPCs. But when I was coming up, we called them and I didn't like this necessarily, but we called them soulless people. They had no soul. And, you know, a lot of the hillbillies would say that it was the hillbilly language. Oh, yeah, they have no soul. And they were very serious about it and intense. But that's the folk. You know? I, I don't think anyone, if you're really human, doesn't have a soul. I just think it's not. That's why I didn't enjoy that very much. Not, I think it's just not activated or it's on pause or it's somewhere. It's elsewhere at the moment. Well, remember, if you're agreeing with the darkness or the light, you're either going to become angelic or demonic. You're going to become one or the other. Well, we talked about this earlier, and I personally, the, the crossroads, we're all at the crossroads. And I personally had a crossroads moment like none before. And I'm a traveler, I'm a seeker. I know the crossroads. 
I've been to the crossroads before, but this on May 8th was a new level, something brand new, intense. And of course, my stance throughout my whole life is I choose life. And because it became, and so, the, you know, our, our own symbols are, are, are personal and I know my, I know myself, so I know my symbols and the light, dark shadow play that was going on was death or life. And so I choose life. I walk with death. We all do. Death is a friend. Death is, is a birth at the same time. And we know this, but this is not that. And it was a choice that is way deeper than that. But as I went through this, and this was not a dark night of the soul situation with that, which I am familiar with in my own journeys. Um, and it's a, that's another subject, but the thing that engaged in me when I, when this happened, because I, there was nothing, there was no more road, no more road, but momentum had to happen. And when I chose life, that moment, everything started to open, all the doors opened up and here it is over. Well, that was May 8th and it's June 21st. And my life is dramatically, unbelievably dramatically different. Everything about it is different. My health, everything. And so it just drove home to me that this is that time. This is not the time where you pause and wait. You can't wait. The momentum is happening and the choices you make are happening. And I realized that when I hit that crossroad, that there was, even though I was stopped and I knew I had these options, the road under me was going to move forward. And so I, I, I bucked up. It's scary sometimes to let go. And that's the crossroads. You have to lose something to gain something. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's a no Nana. brainer, occult priestess. It's a no brainer to people like us, but I, some people don't understand this concept. And that's that know thyself that's what concept. You're here for. Yes, yes. You're teaching. And I'm I'm like, woohoo, I'm over here cheering you on. <laughs> awesome. Genesis told us this years ago. Got to get in to get out. Yes. <laughs> but so what I'm trying to get at here is that I'm noticing the dead eyes. And so I'm not suggesting that they don't have a soul, but I am suggesting that the light's gone out. And that light to me is the light of God. Yeah. Uh, me too. Me yeah, too. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's the all father. And well, I actually have a saying for this. There's the lights and then there's the lack of lights. And I call them lack of lights. <laughs> I just did a, I do these little things over at the salon. Oops. One of my babies just fell oh. um, at the salon. And uh, I, one of them is called all them parasites, which is a play, a run on all them, which is from Rosemary's baby. Right. And it, it, th these are, I've been doing, they're called journal entries. So what it, they are is I get up and some days I have something that needs to be said. And so I record that generally. I just come over here and record. I've been sharing them a couple. I've shared a couple and they're just straight up unedited and they flow. And you know, when you're in the flow, right? It's coming through. It's pure. So this one that's called all them, parasites is basically this idea they're around us and it's the light it, the the golden light versus the false white light and and that's where it's at it was so it's so apparent but people are getting trapped into this this basically this false narrative this false light and as you I, I would like to say about that false white light if you watch your tv closely and i know this is weird you kind of have to be psychic but like look at oprah on tv she will have a white dots in her eyes and just check it out i mean then you will start seeing it in other celebrities they have that false luciferian light and i've seen it it's wild it it well it's happening and it's almost hive like and so it, it it's um it, it it's uh, 
it's easy to distinguish once you get a feel for it. But the problem is when you have lived your life or have been slowly transitioned into the false light, which is a synthetic light, and you think that's the light, a synthetic sun, then that's what you think it is. And it can do, remember the trickery here, everything is about a lesson and these lessons are the choices we make, etc. And people are not in touch with this golden warm light. It's been stripped away and it's a long time it takes a long time to understand and trust yourself and understand that you know the feeling of home, whatever that is for you, you know what home feels like. You may have never been there, but deep in you, there's a yearning for it. And that yearning will guide you. And sometimes that's all you have to go on. And it doesn't matter what template you put over it. It just does not matter. But if you have been conditioned to believe this other state of reality, this other genre, this other cast of light is what you thought was home, it would be easy to trick you into that. These people you trust, the systems you trust, they've, they've worked hard to get your agency to take away from you. And when you allow that inner attraction towards home to open up. It is something that is indescribable. And that is what is apparent to me right now, occult priestess. And sadly, I see all these, these, these blank stares, these eyes with no light. And I think about the podlings and dark crystal. I, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Uh -oh. <laughs> Synchro bell. I was talking about the dark crystal with someone this morning. And and how <laughs> that I was getting that same vibe. And we we're talking about, you know, energy, vampirism and all that. It was just, it's interesting. So deserving that of a synchro bell. You know, vampirism is a form of codependency. Codependency and vampirism have a lot in common. And my friend Christy in the chat and I just did a watch along of the film Renfield, which is about a codependent relationship with a vampire. Yes. And it was a very good movie too, I thought. Yeah, we had a lot of fun with it too. And we sang, Nick you're Cage. so vain. <laughs> Nick Cage is excellent in it. He really he's, is. I mean, I think he, I was not a fan of his for so long and I'm, he's just knocking it out of the park recently with pig. And I mean, just so many amazing performances that that's a good way to look at that. Vampirism is, is something that I think is not fully understood and there's a misdirect there as well. But what we understand as vampirism on the surface level is akin to like mosquitoes and ticks and stuff. These things that what role do they really play? Well, they do feed the bats, ironically. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I've always found that so well, ironic. vampirism usually is on the way to possession as an end goal. So that's what I still wanted to talk more about possession. And I know you have so much more to offer in this department. I, I just, I think that, and so with the, the dead eyes and these people that seem to be checked out. So I don't want to, I don't want to um, cast it in any other way. They just checked out. I've been very vocal about it in the past, but I'm trying to just let it be, but they're checked out. It looks like they're gone. And like I said, they're, they look normal. They sound normal. They're functioning normal, but they're not there. And it's different <clears throat> than in PCs. This is where at a different stage here, something is in them that doesn't understand what lettuce is. Something is in them that doesn't understand what basic human things are going on in this realm that we once inhabited. They don't understand. And they're asking these stupid questions. They seem stupid, but I'm finding them 
to sound sincere in it. They sound sincere. So they're trying to understand this realm. They're invaders of some sort. They are parasites. Mm, that is creepy. And so I, it's looking I don't get out invasion. of the house much, so I don't know. <laughs> Listen, I don't either. I'm a mm. notorious hermit, but I do, you know, I have to, there's things that have to happen and I go and I mostly watch. And then for the last couple of years, I just wasn't able really to do a lot. So I would just, you know, get by with a little help from my friends. Mm, yes, girl. And, uh, you know, yes. and so, <laughs> but now I've been, I've been, traversing the realm a little bit more and in traversing the realm i'm not seeking interactions i have had some very intense psychic intel about icon i've always been an eye contact person my momo raised me to have eye contact and um it was a way and i i read people that way always but there was an intel i had recently and it was the tractor beam intel. So it's not new news, but it was it was very like, watch yourself now. The presence of these things that you get. And ironically, this was before that story came out in Vegas where they were talking about it's like they couldn't look away. That kind of thing. Whatever that story was, there and a cult priestess. I oftentimes don't care if it's a true story or a false story. If the collective zeitgeist is devouring it, if the collective I told is, you the collective is the real enemy, the brainwash is absolutely. And so they're bringing this, these narratives are important to look at. I, why get caught in the minutia of what you the, read? The even I, everyone should know that there's two sides of media. It's eyes to see and ears to hear. You can read a psychic vision right so if you have psychic vision if you have this talent which i think most people do or if you're talking to god if you are very sincere you will have eyes to see and ears to hear somebody with those eyes to see and ears to hear can read an article and get all kinds of knowledge about what's going on with the collective through this article on how to make cookies yes. and some you know a regular person just sees a cookie recipe we get things highlighted for us with a highlighter, I have watched episodes of South Park and learned the most profound wisdom, yes. but it was because my spirit guides were narrating. All they needed was a cartoon or something in front of me to distract my ego so they could tell narratives, but also with, a, you know, opening a book randomly, it happens on a small scale, but I think for those as the Schumann resonance or whatever rises or as we resonate with one another, because light is supposed to be more powerful than darkness. And if the light people are resonating more, then we're going, it's like, we're all violins. We're all going to hum at the same time. And that hum gets loud enough. It shatters through the darkness. Right. And that's the hum. I was when I first made that choice on May 8th, by May 10th, my belly was humming. Wow. Now that's a great place to be humming too, girlfriend. I mean, it's it really was, hard to get that chakra in alignment. <laughs> it was amazing. Congratulations. This has been, it's been singular in my life. This whole thing has just been amazing with, with the, with the Schumann, well, with the, this whole thing, this whole situation, uh, as we move forward, I guess I, I want you to give us an idea of how dark it will get. Like, let's look at what you see is like the, the, how dark will this get? Well, it's pretty simple in physical terms because I know my got my guides are narrating the 1940s house where in, they're in the war and, you know, England is getting bombed and they have air raids and everything. And this is what I'm being shown for the very particular reason of how dark it's going to get physically. But <laughs> what most people don't understand is we are reincarnated. We are our ancestors. We have all the karma of the past on us now. And in the past, magic was real. 
maybe even we had unicorns, but we definitely had witches that stole babies. And we can look at uh, Bill Gates, Epstein, and all these other people and see it as the modern version. But we better bone up on our folklore because these creatures are coming back. They have different forms, but they are the same archetypes completely. But I think things are going to get what I call metaphysical. Like, I think what you're seeing with people already is quite metaphysical. But when people start tripping without taking any medicine, that's when I know we've hit a peak. Um, but so it's not just going to be dark and destructive. There may be pockets of utopian hippie type situations happening where all these past life yogis have found each other. <laughs> so it's a mixed bag. <laughs> it is. But I think that uh, the new world order, you can't. All the war machine, which is what I was told um, from my guides, that the war machine has a velocity to it. It had a speed to it. And history is the nightmare from which we all must waken from our past lives and into the now to have the new earth, as some call it, or just the new paradigm that is coming that is positive instead of this negative. We are in the Kali Yuga. So... Basically, I believe that God is driving the ship. We all have our missions. We all have, we can know in meditation what we are to do and what is to come. There is nothing keeping that from us anymore. I feel like the veil is thinning through this process, again, with the eyes to see, ears to hear. And spiritual upgrades, some people call it, but that's way too matrix talk for me. You know what I mean? But I think the light is going to get brighter in those who have it, and the darkness is going to get darker. And it is battle royale, and this is the this is the end of the end and before the beginning. Yeah, I agree. And um, you know, maybe I explain it differently, but we're talking the same thing. Oh, totally. I know that, and yeah. I like that we have different flavors because yes. the show, we have different flavors. So we can reach everyone. This could be thought of as what some would call a DNA upgrade. Exactly, another... and I did have visions of that, yeah. but it did, it wasn't. It was they hit. They had said DNA, and they have used DNA. The ancient Egyptians have used that term with me, and they've shown me the double helix. And it's this is particularly the god Thoth. He told me that the sun god, Ra, his rays will turn into onks that unlock DNA. That's how that was explained to me. And when I explained it to someone else, they're like, well, of course, that's the solar flares. And I was like, oh, that's very interesting. <laughs> Yeah, and that but makes yeah, sense. We are, if we are from ancient Egypt or Greece or any of those past lives, then we have cultivated the wisdom and we're actually star people where our souls have come from a higher dimension with much more knowledge. But we, we get dumbed down here so we can grow a soul, but that we can also be helping these people along to grow their soul as volunteers. So there is a hierarchy. A lot of people don't like to see that, but uh, that's also going to come through Nish and thank goodness for that day when it does, but people will be able to see those with more light and actually give them more respect. And we may have divine right at some point. I, I want to give a shout out to 1940s house. I watched that years ago and I love it. Oh my it. goodness. I love, yeah. I love that whole series. Edwardian house, Victorian, the, all of it. A big fan, big, big, big fan, especially as someone who lives like a Victorian. Dude, um, that's, that's amazing. I really respect that. I got people out there that can, that can, can vouch for me on that. And, uh, and that's just my vibe. I, for some reason, I was always, I came in this iteration and somehow I never left that. My mom knew this and it was a thing. Like I, I somehow I've got something there. I don't know where I came from before here. I'm one of those honest people that says that, but I know that I have this honing on home. And I know like when I hit that crossroad and when I saw that golden light, I knew, you know, I know what home is. And nothing is going to get in the way of that. So these shows are actually very educational for people. Not only the 1940s house, but the, the Edwardian one and the Victorian one. These, they're teaching people how to get along 
and do things because we used to do that. And when you're mentioning the folk stuff, that's mm -hmm. always led me always down with the folk, right? Always the folklore, the folk remedies. This is where our wisdom, this is where our oral traditions live. This is the real true, true. This is not the fuckery of narrative. This is not the winners telling the story. This is grandma with no teeth that's 99 years old telling you how to shuck corn and telling you the healing properties of what to do with it. And, and all this, this is where I live, Miss Occult Priestess. And those are the people I want to, to um, bring up because those are the people that have brought me up and their stories, their ways, their way. We didn't used to go to the hospital to bear babies, everyone. Mm. Your midwife didn't, wasn't a nurse with a certificate, you know, and, um, your general practitioner, the doctor that came around to everyone's house knew everything. It wasn't, you didn't need a specialist because the general practitioner knew the community and had seen it all and done it all. And they knew what was going on. It's like, uh, I, I welcome everyone to watch that uh, documentary. One of my heroes is a midwife in the world, uh, Juliet of the Herbs. And if you have not, like, seriously, write that down. Jerry, if you can find that, it's the whole thing is free on YouTube. Julia of the Herbs. This is a Jewish woman that changed the world. And most people don't understand how she did. And she came from a very wealthy family. And she ended up walking amongst the folk. And she changed the world of veterinary stuff and everything. She's remarkable. And her books are cornerstones of healing, especially with animals. So um, this is where we need to be. And by watching things like 1940s house and Victorian house and all this, you can learn how to get by and not only get by, but get by well. We don't need all this stuff. And so if there's a reset happening, this reset happens inside us, but it also puts the power back in our hands to grow our own food to understand what's a real soap and what's a poison. Do you know how poisonous our soaps are? I mean, stuff like this, just little, little things. And that, you you know, it's all right to live a day according to the solar rays. When the sun goes down, grandma used to go down, child, and she would get <laughs> up with the sun, right? And she'd have a full day and everything was her cicada, her circadian rhythms were on. And these people lived a long time, uh, you know? And so this is not, does not need to be scary. What we do need to be worried about is other people. This is where it gets scary. These are the possessed. These are the, the, the death eaters that will come at you. And because the collective has been feeding on this through social engineering for so long, it's happening. Cannibalism is popular. Um, pedophilia. You know, the, the pedophilia is now legal and we should be, feel comfortable with it and we caught we should have compassion for these people and let them out of prison and all this because they're 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 mapped now and this is why we know that this realm is looking demonic however you want to look at it archontic it is not the realm i want it's not the realm i choose i don't choose that death i don't choose that path but i realize i have to walk through that We're all that's this is a final test, the final countdown, babe. Right. And I'm excited. So we are kind of excited, aren't we? Kind of excited. <laughs> I'm excited to see how this can play out. I'm I know I don't die, just like you know this. I know that I'm making choices to not die. And that second death is something I love to talk about because it, it's in it's in secret societies as well. They talk about it. It's in the Bible. It's everywhere. It's it's talked about. And we don't. I think to that's what they're avoiding with their AI and plugging themselves in. That's what they're cryogenic. trying to avoid. Yeah, that second death. I knew it. I mean, it's like the sword of Damocles hanging over their heads. And I love that they have to deal with that every moment of every day. Mm -hmm. Oh, but it's it's there always. So they have to live in those moments of running in the shadows 
Isn't that a Fleetwood Mac song? (laughs) (laughs) It's, I think, a lyric at least. (laughs) (laughs) Wait, this isn't prima donnas of the gutter. I didn't mean to be cheeky. So, um, but this is what's happening. And if we bring the power back to our own hands, that I can do this, that you can do this, that no matter how dark it is, you know you're not going to die, that you have a relationship with yourself, And that what we are doing is meeting our collective selves. This is when, you know, Jung talked about the encounter with the collective unconscious, now terrifying that was. (laughs) Every day it's terrifying. Yes, absolutely. And then you look at his love poem to his soul, you know, the most beautiful love poem ever written in my opinion. And it's his, his poem to his soul, his anima and Well, I am in love with my animus too. I must confess. We should be. This is where that is, uh, that becomes this. um, Well, it's like the dark crystal again, that in scene where they come together, right? The Skeksis and the the prophets and they become those higher beings. And I I found that I came to the dark crystal so late. I was so late. I didn't even know because I don't, I you know, I just never owned a TV and it was, I was way older when that came out. And, but when I saw, I was watching it and I was dumbfounded by the masterful story right there. Dumbfounded. I was, and then I, you know, I had to own it and I talk about it a lot because I think that it's the core of, of the larger story that gives one hope. All of this is a journey. We understand that. There's a point to point here. However, that just sounds simplistic when you're walking through the valley, when you're in the field, when you're in the weeds, when you're pushing up daisies. Yeah, that's right. So um, they're looking for the word demon or daemon in the chat. So I spelled it the way I spelled it. And if you go to WordPress or a callpriestess.com, you'll see a link to my WordPress, um, which is a cultist in the corner, my blog. And if you look up daemon, the way it is spelled there, you'll see an entire article about how I explain demon versus daemon and how you're becoming one or the other. Got it. That yeah. was me, by the way. Say what? That was me. <clears throat> Your answer. Oh. Thank you. Thank <laughs> I put you that so in there. I, I I've always learned that the Greek uh Greek word was daemon with D A I. That's okay. I've seen it spelled lots of ways. Well, I don't think it's a particular but yeah, uh, if you my Google article it, if you want to see it, you I, know. I will check it out. You gotta specialize it. So yeah, um and a demon Nick, a D A E M O N demon is also a computer process. Yeah, I know. And when you look up things, I was explaining this to Christy recently. When you look up things on the internet now that Google is broken, everything is corporate. I don't Mm -hmm. care what you're looking up. You're going to get CNN, an article they have on it. You're never going to find that little homemade blog by that little pagan that had the most special connection with the goddess. You know, you're Mm -hmm. not going to find that real talk anymore. No. Well, we're under, yeah, we're under... An information Under embargo. Heavy. Yep. It, you, I mean, fortunately, some of us got to enjoy when there was actual freedom on the internet and it was everything, everything. Remember when you could type in a search and it would be, yield hundreds of pages and all of it was juicy. I mean, it's like, oh my God, I'd love to, I was just talking about this today with Krista that you could skip to we'd skip to like page 10 and you'd just juicy juicy stuff now it's all the corporate stuff now it's all the the stuff that is being pushed through these agendas it is so controlled and the information is so sparse and almost all of it is a mislead a misdirection yeah it's totally broken (laughs) But Nish, uh, what I wanted to say was I was reflecting on your getting back in touch with the collective and being able to feel the vibe and reading it even on a daily basis and understanding what's going on. Being able to call the shots is what I call that. Reflecting upon that, I saw that myself, I'm, I've been in a really weird space for about six months. You know, I just moved um, about six months ago. 
from LA out to South Carolina changed everything in that sense. But then I went back home to Ohio where I haven't been in seven, eight years and saw all my family and all the old places and did old things that I used to do, like read tarot cards at a bar with my friends. Um, really old school, like, hey, let's go back 20 years and re-experience your life. And I felt like it was in a time warp and it was the physical, like I could even physically feel that it was different um, and that I was going through this huge initiation. And then uh, upon coming back, my favorite aunt is in hospice and she half raised me. So upon coming back from that Ohio trip, I inherited antiques and a bunch of my aunt's things. And so now her energy, her beautiful, loving, gorgeous energy is all over my house. And I've seen her like she was a model for me. What is a woman? Ha <laughs> ha, Matt Walsh. <laughs> well, it's Aunt Pat, Matt. <laughs> and so I have all of her beautiful, delicate things and I feel more feminine. Thank you, Christy, for helping moving all the furniture and Freeman too. Thank you. Um, but I have not been in the collective. It seems like I've been out going through this initiation of my past. Who were you? Who are you? And that's when it came the universal message, the one for the planet of this is the time. We're getting near the end of the end. And this is the time to know thyself if you're ever going to know thyself. That is your bomb shelter, people. That's it. Know thyself. Other than that, make sure you can take care of your physical being i encouraged everyone to to use this mantra and the people out there that did are not the same people that started with it the floodgates open so it's one that comes with a warning you must understand the ramifications of using this mantra and i'm i'm so you can you can manipulate it and use it in diff you can change the wording but this is the basic mantra give me the strength and fortitude to see the world as it really is give me the strength and fortitude to see others as they really are and give me the strength and fortitude to see myself as I really am. And if you get into this mantra and you say it like a mantra into the mirror before you go to sleep, you will see the world as it really is. You will see the people around you as they really are. And by God, you'll see yourself as you really are. And there are people out there that will give this an amen. I say almond raw baby. Also, Nish, I just got a flash of you at the grocery store talking to the lettuce head. <laughs> <laughs> and that also know that your energy being such a high vibration, I would call it kundalini myself personally, that affects people. And if they're lack of lights, as we were speaking of, they're going to be more there. It's like you're jamming their transmission, right? They, they, they're not normal around you because they're like buzzing refrigerators that are off key with everything natural. And when your natureness comes in, it demands a certain alignment and they're not making that connection, that alignment. And they, they like glitch out in front of you. I, I, and I do try to factor that in. I do, but at the same time, it's, it's also showing me where they are and what they are. So it's like this thing, and I've I've enjoyed talking with you about some of this stuff in the past. Um, when I was little, and my mother was very Native American bent here, you know, with the sack fox stuff and all this. Um, I came in, and I always saw hybrids. So my mother's language, and I I call her Momo, uh, but people every time I say that, people are like, "What?" So it's easier just to say mother. Um, she, she, uh, she translated this in a way that made sense. So I would see, I had a babysitter one time and she had mouse ears and I loved her. Let me tell you, I loved her so much. I was so in love with her as she's the most kind, wonderful, caring young lady. She's probably a teenager. You know, I'm a little kid, but I just, when it, when she would be the babysitter, I was so excited. And I said, just like a child would, 
you know, um, I, I mentioned how much I loved her mouse, her mouse and the mouse in her. And she said, what do you mean? And I said, your mouse ears. And she was so paranoid. She never came back. She, it made her cry. And I, here I am saying it out of love. And, and it was like, it's been like this repetitively my whole life. I would see the different things, you know, the different things, worms, pigs, all this stuff. And my mama came through and would talk about it as I would see, I was seeing their totem, but see, here's the thing. And that's possible. I think I was actually seeing this hybrid energy in people. Now I, I accepted that totem narrative and I, I got into it and it seemed it seemed to answer that question. It seemed to be something that was there that would answer, like, why do I see people? This is why I was blown away when that ch ch TV show that was out, I don't know how long ago now, Grimm, that was that was um, aired over here in Portland. And I watch it because they called it voguing when you'd see their animal. Um, based on the grim fairy tales. And I, I became a fan of it only because of that, because it was kind of cheesy. But that became something I didn't know about the projects. I did not know about hybridization at that time. I only knew that I saw animals or other things in people. And then I would see pure people that were just you know, like homo sapien, homo sapien all the way through. And then there were the others of cult priestess that were not of the known animal kingdom. And I'll tell you what, those are the ones that scared me. And they still are. Have, do they have anything in common? Or is there a socioeconomic or are they just everywhere? The, yeah, I don't see a common thread with them. Okay, so I do see some commonalities within some of them because there's more than one type. So I do see, I can look at people that are in big positions of power and I can see this. I can see that that's going on. But amongst us, the common folk out here, I see them and I think the best way to look at them is I see a lot of them as very predatory and I also see them kind of like uh now I can I've always considered myself an observer or a watcher I feel like that was the biggest role in my life because I'm not I'm I like to call it witness yes well I, I've been, definitely been a witness I'm witnessing child it's so and, sacred that mission you know, of witness <laughs> it's well it is and, and it is a role of doing through non-doing and um but there are those I around wish us. more people would know what doing through non-doing is but it is about checking your ego and a lot of people can't do that yet but man that was a great point to bring up it, it's it's a process. It takes some people quite a while to get there. It took when I was little working on dead stillness for different reasons. It it, it came upon me. But th so these things I see out there now, and there's a plethora of them. Some of them do appear to be kind of in a witness role. They're out. They seem to be observing, like in Fringe, like the observers in Fringe. And I only watched that one time through. So I, I, you know, I didn't obsess on it or anything and, but they, you know, they're like that. I, I can't say they look like that, but they, that's what they, a good interpretation of them is. You did mention watcher. And I think that that's most accessible for Americans to understand the watchers <laughs> in that biblical sense. Yeah, absolutely. And see the thing about me and the, and the Bible is I'm not a Christian. But I love the Bible. I know. I, I hear you. But, you know, to approach some of these wonderful stories and to be able to talk in those languages, it's a language. It's absolutely a language and it's analogy and it's um, it's symbology. It's allegory. We've got story here. What's not to love? There's story here. And people pull up to these stories and it's important to understand what people are feeding upon to understand how they are, what they are. You are what you eat. You engineer society in one way, you feed them narrative. 
it brain and however method you want to do it, brain entrainment, uh, all kinds of ways to get them mind washed or mind wiped. And then you do all this other stuff. You can poison the food slowly. You can, you can dim down their cognitive abilities. It doesn't matter. You are what you eat. You are the water you swim in. And it's important to understand that if you want to have a bridge of communication. And for me, bridging communication is more important than not. If I need to communicate with a troll to get across a, a fucking bridge, baby, I'm going to learn that language. Exactly. And it is about that adaptability. And that's having more, in my opinion, where I, my teachings, it's having more light versus the less light again. The more light you have, again, matrix, you can get downloads. Hey, I need to fly this helicopter so I can get where I'm going to finish this mission from God. And so, boom, you can fly the freaking helicopter. And so much more than that. Be living intuitively, having your light on all the time, having your ears on all the time is a great goal. And that's actually enlightenment. So where every little menial task of your day comes about in a genius way. And it's a beautiful, I'm going to go into poetry. I'm going to stop, but it's a beautiful state of mind. And it is a state of mind. It is a state of consciousness to be in. That's what enlightenment is. And it's almost as if you're tripping on a psychedelic, but so much more loving than that even. But and not confusing, it's still very precise. You could do ballet, you could be a ninja. It is superhuman, if you ask me. I love that. And I love the thought of you going into poetic expression. You shouldn't spare us that, my goodness. <laughs> I, I just, I'm not used to doing it in public. And when I do it in <laughs> private, I do do it, but it's fun. But I'm just seeing like how silly it must be. Uh, but I know it is creative play and it is sacred. I just, I don't really share it much with strangers. <laughs> right. Well, and this is the open world out here. It's like, right. <laughs> but, but since Jerry gives everyone a wrench, trolls don't have a chance. Awesome. If, you, if your troll game's good, you win. If you, it doesn't, there's nothing <laughs> anyone can do. So I was telling her before we should, we started that we, the, I don't even remember having a, a troll really. If you even look at the people we blocked, it's like two people. Yeah. And those were absolute necessities. They well, weren't beyond trolls. Uh, yeah. We're not big it, enough or nobody really has stuff to troll about. Yeah. It, it's, um, you know, this is another thing that comes into mind here, too, is the vibrational thing, the rate at which we're humming in 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 that piece, I w in that journal entry, it, it's this hum rate for me is what I, I'm all on this hum rate. And it's wonderful because I'm in my garden, I'm having bumper crops of of fruit and berries right now. And I mean, just I can't. I, there's more raspberries than I could ever handle. I mean, seriously, I could supply a town and it's like this. That's really year. good news. <laughs> it's like this every year you're in my, my woods and, um, and you know, I'm gonna have my girlfriends come over and get, get some of that bounty. But as I'm eating the berries from the vine, the bees are humming around me, the honeybees, and I'm I'm feeling something similar to that hum. There's something going on for me with this hum. And in that in that journal entry, I was talking about this. It's raising me up. I'm feeling more effervescent. And these... that's the word. That's the word I came up with. Effervescent too. I mean, because it's bubbly like champagne. Yes. Yes. And that's the thing. I think if we understand that, if we experience it more, however it comes to you, because it's coming in different ways for to different people, there's not one recipe here, then you can push into it. Once you get a taste of it, the manna, you get a taste of it and you understand what it is. Nothing else works. Nothing else will do. 
and it's this holy of holies. Can you um, give them a little bit of taste of what manna is and why it is a reward, a reward for being good girls and good boys? Well, you're the guest here. Why don't you do that? Because I'm already talking a lot. I feel like I'm I'm running the show tonight. <laughs> well, we Come are on. all your fans too. We love you too. I'm so glad that you're being expressive because I'm <laughs> learning. I'm learning. Everyone's learning. It's awesome. Well, that's what we're always doing. That's what we're always doing. But why don't you give us a little bit of manna from God, Miss Occult Priestess? Yeah. So I'm nectar of the gods. And so we can see that as Greek, but um, it's mostly spoken of in the Eastern religions. It is actually a substance, which is so cool because I was always fascinated with the thought of ectoplasm and I've seen ectoplasm in dreams, but I really doubt it in real life. But this stuff really is true. <laughs> so it is a, an actual taste that manifests within the mouth. Um, oh my gosh, it actually does taste like, uh, when you've had a psychedelic and your, your nostrils are draining backwards and you have a special psychedelic taste in your mouth. It's a lot like that. I think it's pineal juice, if mm -hmm. you will, mm -hmm. because I've tasted it so often and it's when very high states of consciousness for like weeks at a time, but mm -hmm, mm -hmm, with that tasty roof of your mouth, honey, Life yes, taste. Yes, yes. Right? The golden honey. Mm -hmm. And it is a gift of, from God. It is a blessing, but it is all because you're, all your stuff's working, all your light and all your machines and all your candles are lit up in your altar room upstairs in your subconscious. And your super consciousness is beginning to manifest within the body. That higher self, that higher angel is beginning to find its way into the body temple. And then it, what's happening to me, I get lectures all the time on health and herbs and what I need to be doing to prepare the body temple for the higher soul. And that's probably going to take me who knows how long to truly prepare this vessel for that kind of light. And uh, then we're fighting the new world order in the real world. But these are the spiritual things I'm super working on. That's where I have to put my dedication because that's the most important thing. The more light we can handle, the quicker all this will be over. And it's just a Buddhist thing, really, which I've been in many past lives. So it's like rote, it's normal that we try to embody as much light as possible because we did take a vow to keep incarnating the Bodhisattva vow until all of those jerks <laughs> reach enlightenment. So we just want, you know, peace for every sentient being. But to be able to do that, there's other things that have been incorporated, like the second death, to be able to do that final calling and then beyond that is so beyond science fiction it's so beyond going to the moon it's so beyond ai and transferring consciousness the truth of the future of what is coming for mankind the flip of the switch of golden souls incarnated in physical form on the planet we know as earth is such a bigger concept than anything that's been written about or put out in the collective through the media, through the darkness. They are trying to hide a beauty that is going to become impending and they won't be able to stop it, but it is a beauty. But before that is the darkness and they have their time. And that's about where we are right now. Oh, and yes. I, did, I had a vision, I wonder, Oh, tell us this yeah. vision. So it was during my last Kundalini awakening, I was completely out of my ego, out of my mind, out of my body. So context. Um, but I had a vision that I was in a cabin in the woods. It was mine. And there were tall trees everywhere. Um, then I saw the winds came, the darkness came. It was purple outside. And a voice whispered, the tears are in the wind. 
And then all of these little paper slivers just flying everywhere. And I knew it was a super intense time and there was no electricity in my place. There was no contact. There was no way of knowing, but psychically I was seeing everything that was happening with the collective and how God's story was playing out in the tares and the wheat, right? The wheat is the gold. The tares would be the lead. The lead is in the wind and others, in other words, but having it in the wind is having evil set loose in the wind and it will attach anywhere it can. But at, in this vision, which was in the mental realm, not necessarily that this is particular cabin is going to happen to me, but I was in that cabin beyond time and space watching the plan of God. At that time, the lesson was the tears are in the wind. And this happened before COVID. This happened about maybe even five years ago, but I get cognitive visions of the future because they're not the future at all from where I see them, from where I experience them in the moment they're happening. That moment happens to be above my consciousness and beyond my ego. Does that make sense? Absolutely. I love this. And, and the, the wind also, I'm thinking about that the, it's in the minds of the people. Yes, it's in the mental realm. It's attached yes. to every little head it can. Every third eye it's trying to grab so that it can have a little bit of soul to express in this world. It, it's like the dead are coming home to bodies. Yes. It, it, and it's, um, I got a, an image of shrapnel too, it, the way you were describing that. It, it, it almost looked like a confetti party, but it was very scary. <laughs> Yeah, I was seeing like that you gave us the paper idea, but it still had this psychic shrapnel yeah, aspect to truth. it. She's like penetrating razor blades. Yeah, I get it. What you're that, saying. Yeah. yeah, that's incredible. It was intense, you know, girl. I well, th that's what we're here to do though. That these are the things, right? We open ourselves up to this, and that's why it's important to engage ourselves in like the mantra I said earlier we can engage our own self, our, our own unconscious, that which we cannot see that is ours into an active process to work with us by feeding it mantras like that and other mantras. But the thing is, don't dilute the mantra, live with the mantra, be with the mantra Devote some time to it. I suggest three months is always a good time. And with this one, get prepared because the floodgates will open and the world that you think you're seeing becomes very, very, very different because you've engaged your shadow. You've engaged your dark content into the process of decoding that now. You've made it active. And by making it active, it's going to work for you as the driver of your vehicle, is that which is animating your sacred temple, the soul that dwelleth within. Yeah, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. <laughs> oh, I know that's right. <laughs> this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. I'm going to bring it to the base. <laughs> I have, I've been recording all day, so I have like no voice. So when we're looking at occult priestess, when we're looking at these major shifts everyone's making, because everyone in our, our circles here in, in our uh, general, uh, I don't even know, spheres of influence, because we're all individuals. This is my insisting that I, I can't take these cults of personality. I'm dude. So, oh oh my, my god, they're everywhere. Even little even households are cults, dude. Oh. You are P in P not PC in your own freaking house. It's a cult. That is so such a problem that people are taking virtually virtue signaling instead of loving each other. It's driving me nuts. I mean, as you and, know, and, and well, what is that? You know, what is loving each other? So loving each other is not about controlling each other. Where and God, the hell? no, you know, everybody seems to be trying to change everybody's mind. What, what psycho kind of mentality is that? What happened to live and let live? 
Well, it's been censored. Thank you. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's been gone. canceled. <laughs> Girl, it has been canceled. And they've thrown it out the way of all, all the books you can't read now and all the words you can't say. And uh, we got to keep everything safe. Continue on, folks. Nothing to see but what we're showing you. You cannot deviate. And that's what is trying. That's what makes this so dark and it makes it so obvious. And yet I'm still surprised by how fast a whole realm can be locked down, traumatized, re-traumatized, and then come out of that and seek normalcy. What in the actual hell? This is beyond Stockholm syndrome. Thank you. <laughs> this is this is how we know this is a bigger deal. And it's a spiritual world, girl, because it's so <laughs> metaphysical. These illnesses, <laughs> these wrongnesses are so metaphysical. They're not just, you know, bad genes. This is bad lifetimes manifesting. <laughs> It, and it's real. And this is the thing that people, the, the cognitive ability to process intense stuff after major trauma that's been on going is uh, it's difficult. It takes, it takes strong will. And, it, you know, part of that is allowing yourself to break free from your own chains of being afraid to speak, being, you know, everyone now is afraid to say, to speak language, like really language is one of the things that's a gift. There was a sound and the sound created what? And so if our sounds are being dampened, if we get a section of the keyboard to play with and there's a whole set that we're not allowed to play with, what do mm -hmm. we call that? I mean, really, seriously, what is that called? Is this being is this being friendly towards others? Is this being caring towards others? Or is this actually you binding yourself? Well, we have to understand. Well, this I think this is a really good analogy that we are in the witch hunting times when darkness is going to turn on light. And we're going to see it during the elections a lot, even though all politicians are darkness, every vote is a vote for Lucifer. That's a cult, definitely the cult of politics, the cult of mommy and daddy instead of God, government instead of God, right? So people are making a lot of choices and they're signing a lot of contracts in blood. And I think voting is a, is a blood contract because you're actually giving your sovereignty over to a government willingly. Nobody puts a gun in my head and tells me I have to vote. Yes. You know what I mean? But there's going to be a lot of ugliness, a lot, epic ugliness, because look at the Kennedy karma. Look at the Kennedy yes. karma, yes. dude. It's already started, I yet, think. Well, it has yet to explode. Correct. But it's, it's begun. Gonna get, yeah. It's going to be crazy sausages, dude. And every all the lack of lights are going to be lemoning, lemming, <laughs> lemmings, right? The lemmings, yeah. Towards that, and it's going to be explosive. I mean, I see a cobra snake right now in my head as I'm talking about it, but it is medicinal, thank you, because kundalini, y'all will look it up. You get bit by a snake sometimes, and when you do, in your dreams, metaphorically, that's the snake of Shakti and Shiva energy, universal forces, big time initiations of the soul, biting you with an infusion of wisdom. So I can see that happening to the collective, this season coming up where we'll be talking about elections and all that crap, whatever the presidential one is, because usually the spirit realm will move because the collective in such a frenzy at that time, uh, the spirit can have more control sometimes and like get in there because everyone's confused and in a frenzy. And so there, it's a tricky season coming up, but it's usually presidential and not the smaller elections. There are, there are lots of cycles about to end as well. Karma's and, coming home to roost, baby. Yeah. Well, and, and look at what they're pulling into the runway now, coming in from the skies, right? Mm -hmm. 
all of a sudden we have real world talk amongst the people that are the ones telling the people <laughs> that this is real is we've got now the ET stuff on a different level and the narrative has blown open. And, and so what is this? What are we looking at? Now we know that you talked about UFOs as collective um, projections, right? Of and uncertainty. From my own, from my own personal experience, because yeah, the young actually wrote a wonderful article on UFOs as yes. the mythos come to life kind of manifested, but still mythos rooted in the mythos. And a lot of people have sleep paralysis and where they see aliens, like Communion, the book in the film, they Whitley Strieber, they see aliens, they are abducted by aliens. But the ancient form of that, that I had is classic sleep paralysis, where you were being effed with by demons. So we understand also that Aleister Crowley came up with the demon, alien, inner switchable, changeable, transmutable being, um, Lamb, Silence of the Lamb. So Lamb mm -hmm. is the first ET we've ever seen. And when you look, when you overlay Aleister Crowley's teachings, the things that he was putting down as far as social engineering, if you take that on a clear piece of paper and you overlay that over what's going on right now, you will see it fits perfectly. This is the Crowley and Luciferian black magic map that they have been doing for generations. And it was way before Crowley. He just happened to be a big hero of it. And is still today, Jack Parsons was his little student. I mean, all of the Nazi, NASA, all of that stuff, really theosophy in general, the United Nations, everything is tied to this. And the pedophilia, especially the transgender agenda. Crowley would be in hog heaven right now. He was he was a pederast as well. Oh yeah. Well, he you know this is part of his working, and not just his, but many others. There was you know there's the seen and the unseen, which is how we started this whole show. Precisely, full circle, babe. That's right. And sometimes the unseen doesn't mean that it's somehow supernatural or metaphysical. It's just those that are walking around that you do not understand are in control. This is why we look at people and, you know, we're trying, you and I, especially it's your goth kid on the corner is not the enemy. The doctor over there with the coat in a million, you know, letters behind his name, that's really concerned about his golf game and not about healing your mother. The, uh, and I use that cause that was an example I personally had. This woman was so insane. I, I was she missing her golf game. Anyway, um, the, the politician, the corrupt corporate boss, the, you know, all these people with their rules, usually if there is this rigid wall, you can't penetrate like say Antarctica. And everyone's working together to keep that impenetrable. All these nations warring against each other, but they're working together there. They're working together with their space situation. Yeah, you can see it when you're really looking at the big picture, you know, Mercury and Pisces girl over here, big picture girl. And that's how it was so easy for me. When just one David Icke show, that's all I needed just show me that they're all fucking, excuse me, related bloodline people. And I get it because I understand how the dead realm works and how the dead haunt the living, their ancestors haunt them and get them to get into these marriages where there'll be more money. And they're just basically trying to roll through money. And then that goes right back to the technology and trying to escape the satanic death. <laughs> right and enslave us all and live forever well again this is this gets back to that very provocative baptism of the dead and we see it in the mormon church and it, it's all in there i did a whole bunch of shows on this um, can you briefly explain that to me I'm i'm interested please oh girl the baptism of the dead so if we just look at the the Mormon version of it. So 
down underground, they have this whole Babylonian. Um, so this can apply. This apply, This is not just the one. I'm not just picking on that. But there's a there's a preparation. So there's there's children that are groomed for this position that they're going to be vessels for some sacred elder to come through through a baptismal process. They do that in theosophy too. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. This is across the board. It's I gotta, love that you're bringing this up. This is so deep what they do to kids. It's a bit it's a big deal. And but this is bloodline stuff and this is how this is actually part of the vampire story and how people don't understand that. And, and see also um uh what is it? Game of Saturn is talking about it with the Sola Busca deck and um, Scarlet Imprint put those both out. This is juicy Peter stuff. Peter Mark Adams is the author. Pe Peter Mark Adams is a brilliant researcher and scholar with a lot of compelling evidence to give you what you need, but you can also find your way by translating and looking the way you do occult priestess and other people that have eyes that are able to see what's going on and can read between the lines. The baptism of the dead is a very, is very held very secretly and privately. It's done in a way that is ceremonially prepared. It is um, something that is also generationally uh, induced and there's water there's entrainment there are the symbols around uh the whole situation i it's it's too much to kind of over brief when we're already already after the hour but i well, encourage really quickly is does that happen in hollywood too yes but it's so if it was yes of course it does this happens within bloodlines first and foremost and it start and that's why when you start getting into some of these higher some of these different churches or religions it's it's down in the core of it but see the the this is the thing that's always interesting is a lot of the people that are participating in it are brain entrained and they they the maidens willingly do this because they're entrained to do this the parents willingly this is a sacred right. This is like the brides of Christ, right? And the brides of of Dracula, the brides of Satan, the brides of anything. That's it's, what I think. Yes, yeah, definitely. It's, it's the same thing. And there was a wonderful TV show that I want to um, do a deep dive on with someone. I, I extended my hand to my dear friend, Michael Walker, and and also my dear friend, Eric Peterson, to do a breakdown, but I never got any um any uh I, I just think they're too busy for it and that's why i'm not mentioning this series but i need someone to ping off of and break down a series on this that is found its way into uh obscurity but at the same time when you mention it people are like oh yeah and so i don't want to mention it right now but I do need, I am sending a call out right here and a cult priestess. It could very well be you that I do it with where we can break down this series and talk about all this information that's coming forth. And the baptism of the dead is very much at play here. So think about that in terms of vampiric, everlasting love, cheating death, the, the skeleton key in a way talks to this kind of immortality through through this type of processing it's in a different way it's using hoodoo as the format or the template and it 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 still is the same concept it's the same concept as demons coming into you but it's very concise and it's very controlled and it's at the key of importance when it comes to specific bloodlines. This is why bloodlines have been kept pure for so long. Now there's diversions, there's pretenders within bloodlines. So you think it's going one way, but it's act the real bloodlines gone another way. So we started to see when they cast out Harry and that Markle woman, um, I thought this was a very strategic move from the Windsors the lizards that they are 
um, that bred into that sacred bloodline of the Stuarts, which is Diana. And this goes into holy, this is the Holy Grail line and all this. This is the line of Avalon. Um, so they, they got the sake because their line is not that. The Windsors are not that. And no, they're not. we can go into, and, and it's never been more obvious, but they needed to start separating some of that blood in case we have an off with their head situation, which the astrology is lining up for. That makes perfect sense to me. Like bing. <laughs> you get the, you get, you got, got to get a distraction of the bloodline. Otherwise that is going to be a dead end for these beings that have been traveling through the line a long time. And, and this is why we have pretenders. This is why we have diversions and bloodlines. This is why you can find a person that is a pauper somewhere that has more actual royal blood than anyone sitting in the royal houses right now because they need to keep them under the radar. This is when we start seeing different ideas about um the this the uh different rights with uh what is it? My mind's drawing a blank. The star child birth. What is it called? Oh my God. Moonchild? No. It well Moonchild's another version. Um the Parsons? Starfire. The Starfire ritual. It's a it's a specific ritual, and so this stuff's all at play. And when you start seeing the sitting royal families making big moves like that, they're doing this for continuity of bloodline. And what continuity of bloodline actually means is continuity of a few select beings that live within the bloodline that pass through the bloodline the heirs the actual physical heirs are are meaningless it's which ones they are going to jump into next it doesn't matter anything else to them but they need that genetic connection that's the chain that's the blood in and blood out and it needs to stay pure for the consciousness to actually check in and be there in fullness. Precise. If it gets watered down, that it won't work. It, you can't, they won't work. They won't work. This is very specific stuff. I totally agree. That's amazing. I love this subject. I, I think it's a very rare topic for people to even approach, much less understand what they're talking about, which you, you obviously always do know what you're talking about. It's amazing. So is this the skeleton key, the series? The movie with Kate, um, uh, Goldie Hawn's daughter. Oh, that's the real voodoo one. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And it's a fantastic movie. With it the is, great, the great Jenna Rollins. I've just always been a big fan of hers and, and her husband and their work. Um, this was a very good telling of how this works. Now it switches because they are not going by bloodline but you, you can't have everything in one story yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, i mean you can but that that not that not the way this works you get you get the idea they give you the idea here and see also one of the things that becomes very powerful in that telling the skeleton key is the mirror now we can never underestimate mirrors we mirrors are so essential in the control of time travel and in the control of continuity of movement through realms. But it's not just looking in a mirror. It's not just doing the necromantium in the dark with the mirror. It's not just the scrying machine. It's velocity. There's a, got to be a velocity and angles of mirrors reflecting upon other angles of mirrors. And the math has to be precise. The angels angles have to be lined up precisely or you will find yourself in an uncanny valley and you will only be able to reach the counter space by a, a velocity a, a momentum so it's not just standing at one and then looking all the way through and it's not the infinity either see that's a that's a misdirect these are specific angles that get this done and you can enter counter space this way there's math to this 
I love the edge of the mirror, a beveled mirror. Yes. Is. <laughs> yes. Oh, I love it too. And see, this is very specific. These have to be real silvered mirrors. Now there's a lot of experiments that I've personally done. I've worked with the mirrors for a long time. The only ones I've ever found to be fruitful in this department are old silvered mirrors. The new mirrors are not, they don't cut, they do something to separate it. They know that this is possible. And because it's possible, you don't really get that. That's what they did to houses, lead paint, yeah, copper, cop, uh, asbestos, copper, PVC. our houses our, our houses were protective. Mm -hmm. They protected us from these monsters that ride on the frequencies and they came in and they, with all this coding to me, coding's almost essential to, to open people up as, as prey because you take away the power of their shelter. And I'm talking about the real shelters when you had things like lead paint and all this other stuff, you, you've made them vulnerable and in their vulnerability, you can then, feed upon them. There's just so much here, girl. There's so much here. I love it. And I do watch lungs at least a few, like a few times a month, actually over at my Rockfin channel. So we pick some weird movie and we comment on it and it's a lot of fun. So I would love to join you in that process. Yeah. So this would be me telling you what the series is. It's only one season because it was that it was that provocative that it could only be one season and it's been basically obscured. What's now, it, people what was it called? I'm not saying. Oh, we tell but me Jerry, later? you, you, well, you should know because I requested you get it for me. You have, it's there where we look. Okay. And, um, and I can tell you off air, I, but I, I know, just need I know, it. I know what this. I need it not to be brought up because I want to bring it out with someone that can de, decode it with me. Uh, I don't want to just be the only voice. So um, I want to do a show on it. So maybe, you know, a three hour show talking about this and decoding the occult symbolism in it. And I want to bring it back to the public. Now the deep occultists out there, what, once we bring it out, everyone's going to be like, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. But I guarantee nobody's talking about it. Dude, that's what I love. This is renegade girl. We are renegades. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone. And, you know, most of the people, because I do portraits of people that are just are out in our chats and in the audiences I've been doing, I call them portraits. And, you know, the level of people that are in attendance with us, that are in presence with us is astounds me every time. I'm amazed by the high level people that are in these circles, the, the real folk out there that don't have books to push, that are that are in the chats, that are talking and, and all that. These people are stunning. And my portraiture is time and time and time again, prove it. That is beautiful information. I'm so appalled by people that start talking followers and all this bullshit. It, it just is like, are you serious? So you are actually the stuff you profess to not be when you start using that language, my well, followers. We're in a cult. We teach people to think for themselves. <laughs> <laughs> for real. It's just unbelievable. So I, I, again, I feel like I just took over Miss Occult Priestess. Now I love this because I think I needed the vibe. I think that you're um, empowering me. I can feel your starlight, darling. Ooh, and I needed girl. it because I've been working way too hard recently. Mm -hmm. so I don't overwork it. but it's good it's good because it's lined up i want to say something i'm so glad you have the family air you have the family inheritance of course psychic but there's nothing like the actual physical stuff our loved ones their the the sweat of their hands their hair on stuff the this patina and i call that patina is priceless and if you're someone who values that kind of thing, and I think everyone should, what happened to that? Um, you are enriched beyond what you can know when we cherish those things that our loved ones were around. They cried, they grieved, they laughed, they, they had a good time, they had love, they had life was going on. 
and it, imper- it impregnates the wood. It, it, it sparkles the metals. It, it, it just it enriches everything and therefore it enriches you. Look at how old estates, people with really old estates are living in in non-designer houses, right? And it's just a mishmash of stuff that was passed down and how amazing those spaces always look, how amazing they feel. It is, it is something that you can't put your hands on. And when you're in these spaces, you're like, I want to be in here. You're invited in because there's so much of that sticky, beautiful life energy, life energy, old energy where we get our wisdom where the wisdom of our elders comes to us where where i can lay my hand like i'm doing right now on an elder's table and know that my great grandmother was at this table yes yes <laughs> preach preach girl preach <laughs> can you're i get an amen <laughs> well, really you're you're like um what is that? Killing me softly with his song. You really are singing my heart. You're expressing how I'm feeling about these love pieces and how they generate a light. And because this is mostly my aunt Pat stuff. And I almost bordered on worshiping her like as a Greek goddess, (laughs) you know, this is how much I love this woman. I know we've had many past lives together and she's a very strong, loving soul, very deep. And to have her energy here in my childhood coming back to me. Yes. In a, such a big way, in a permanent, almost feeling way. Like this is the rest of my life. I will have these things and this light will be, this energy will be here. It's really blowing my mind. And thank you for expressing that for me. Yeah. Well, I was thrilled when you said that. Do you know how many people don't want the stuff? It gets on the, oh, it ends up on the market. I see stuff, beautiful things. And, uh, and the family doesn't want them. It's like, what, it, what is this saying? This is very, very American, by the way, it's very American. And I don't, I I'm so perplexed by it. I don't understand it because like that chair doesn't fit in with their designed room. It's like, seriously, are you serious? This is, this is, this is the level some people are on. And this is why they stay on that level. We must reach into our own closets instead of someone else's and your closet is your ancestor's closet. It's your, your, your grandmother passes on and leaves this stuff. It's the wisdom of doing by not doing it's it's (laughs) gyms. Why would you turn away energetics like that? That will protect you as a daughter, as a niece, your family, you know, your genetics, even if there's bad blood there, you can heal it this way. Oh, most definitely, because these are portals to the past, as I found out recently. (laughs) All you have to do is sit down and get at the level you were when you were a kid and look up at that piece of furniture again, and it'll all flood back. It's amazing. And I loved hearing you say that. I mean, you described it exactly perfectly, how it was, it was a portal to your, your past, but then it's a portal to her past. And- yeah. And it's a place beyond time where we can meet. Like I even have her bed now, a very fancy automatic vibrate bed. It's really crazy. Ooh, <laughs> but it sounds I, fabulous. Yeah. I feel like I'm in touch with her soul when I'm there. And like, she's become a part of my prayers now because she's my bed too. <laughs> yes. It's really amazing. You know, I also wanted to tell you that this is an extremely timely topic because everyone's dying, (laughs) not to be dramatic or gothic. It's true, though. It is true. It's very true. Well, I watched the antiques market like a hawk Mm. and um, it's been good pickings for nothing. I mean, the free section on Craigslist where I live is unbelievable with real good antiques. Christy and and I were just looking at our marketplaces on Facebook and blown away about what's going on. And we did some thrifting and there were some really nice pieces from not much money. Oh, it's they're going for pennies. It's amazing. There's stuff that that is 1970s prices. Right. I mean, I mean, it's kind of exciting. 
<laughs> and this stuff, and again, with the older stuff too, it's built to last. It was you, built It's got to be wood. You know what I'm saying? It's got to be solid. You know that vibration that you're looking for when you touch something because you're a sensualist as well. I know. Yes. <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely. But there's, you know, stuff that was before pr- planned obsolescence, right? Before Ikea, it's going to melt down in 10 years or whatever, um, the the stuff that was actually meant to last for generations. The, there's a spirit in a tree, and yeah, that spirit... it's very druid of you to bring that up <laughs> <laughs> on the solstice. Even cheers <laughs> for real. And so this is this is that mentality. Look at the Japanese practice of wabi sabi. The, the broken pottery bending through gold. Yes, the mending of beautiful things. The thing was beautiful, and then it becomes more beautiful with the breaks that get repaired again. And I'm just It's a metaphor for what we were saying, what we were talking about. It is. Well, see, that's how this is all connected. It's all connected and as a thread. But this is because we're, we're humming with this. We're understanding this. And it's been... the the modern generations especially are getting very cut off from this because everything needs to be new, a clean slate, a clean mind, a clean wipe. Minimalism. (laughs) Get me back into having that stake in the matrix, a clean slate. I just want to forget that kind of mentality. But it's also about those who are volunteering to eat the bugs and they are becoming minimalists. They're all just falling in line, lockstep, if you will, with the Marxism agenda. Of oh, yeah. Well, they that's will what... own everything and you will own nothing. And how can people not see that this is an over overlord rulership? This is This is an overlord rulership. This is as dark as it can get. You want satanic? This is what I'm saying. Don't look at these goth kids. (laughs) We're sweet usually. (laughs) Yeah, for real, girl, please. I'm a Victorian. Um, I mean, people always trip on me. That's true goth. I love that style. (laughs) (laughs) People always trip on me. But look at you want you want a dark evil lord who could be more satanic than Klaus. Schwab. And right. nobody seems to know or understand that Joe Biden is a pedophile and that his son is also a pedophile and a crack addict. What is going on with that? How come that's not a big deal for anyone? The, it's uh, the, all the evidence is out there everywhere, everywhere. And yet, what are they doing? It's tribal behavior. It's these are non humans. These are non humans. These are the ones facilitating this invasion taking it over jerry do you mean gorilla tribal like animalistic whoever's the Hmm. alpha you just do what the hell they say no i'm more like it's they're a tribe like the the biden supporters are a tribe so they 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 let they you know that they give them a pass on all that shit well also look at elon musk putting brain chips and pigs and putting the pig on stage for everyone to see i mean if that's not cruelty if that's not nazi medicine i don't know what it is he's not a human he's he is not a human he's not elon saves please elon enslaves (sighs) all these people fooled by his ass trip me out Jake Vanek and I just did a seesaw session and that was our target was Elon Musk. So that'll be out at the cosmic salon this week. This is non-human. There's um, I always talk about, and I give the good example because Melania Trump is non. she's not a human. Look at her clearly. This is my eyesight. I know this, but she's not a human. And the Baron is a hybrid and he's very protected. He's got some sort of role. I don't know what the role is because I there's such a firewall around. And he's people. like eight feet tall or something. He's still a teenager. I know, but he's huge. He, he's who's, a, he's who's the Baron? I literally Baron's the, the son, the youngest Melania son of Trump. On Trump? Of Trump. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yes. And, and so the th- there's the bigger woo there, though. There's the bigger woo. Melania is non-human. Are you telling me he's a tall, white alien from Orion who happens to he's, be a white supremacist? He's something. 
I don't. I'm not character. I was going to go with Anunnaki, but <laughs> anyway. Well, if you look at Melania, if you really truly look at her face, look at look at the structure of her body, look at her hands, and give me a break. This is not a man. This is a non. This is an, a non-human. Have you seen the Vril? chicks of the nazis the hot alien psychic vril chicks yeah like because she looks and like that's one of kind them of the, like that's maria orsic the yes exactly maria orsic very good a plus jerry <laughs> and the whole thing with the hair to the ground remember the victorians were doing that most remember, definitely you could talk to the dead better if your hair reached the ground absolutely there's a reason for this there's a reason why native americans had this practice too a lot of them not all of them but a lot of them had this practice there's a reason why certain monks have this practice too chinese we're talking too. antennas right and oh i love, love the old chinese masters mm. there's Who this, you baby oh, oh girl well, it, 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 was a, every, it was a mark day. of humiliation to cut off someone's hair they used to do it as punishment Samson and Delilah. Mm -hmm. Not their hair, it's but their all ponytail. around us. Right. It's all around us. The Buddha had super long hair, dudes. Well, it because uh, there's what okay, so Wait, he's not bald and, and fat. No, that's the Chinese Buddha. <laughs> the thing about? is, though, when you think about, and this is why uh black people with the the locks although i'm just going to say this black people are not the only people with locks scandinavians and slavics and and people going way back this is not an appropriation thing so step off my dress but when we're talking about hair and letting it grow super long what are we talking about we're talking about the idea of patience we're talking about the idea of of an acceptance of yourself it's an acceptance of yourself because hair becomes an identity and there is something magical about different cultures that cover the hair. I get, I really do get that. I mean, look at the Jewish people with the, that cover the hair with the wigs, you know, and they figured out how to style really great wigs and all this, but the hair sacred. But even as a priestess, we're taught to cover our crowns around muggles. That's why I wear hats so often on video. Girl, I wear hats everywhere. You will not <laughs> see me outside. Of, I get, I, I'm home. I take them off. My mother taught me that early on. And so, no, I mean, I, I, I can walk amongst Muslims most of the time because my dresses are so long and I have hats on and stuff. I, I, I've, I've gotten in Ubers in cities and I've got them talking about call to prayer and stuff. I'm like, I'm not a Muslim. <laughs> well, it sounds super charming. Well, look at the look at the mysterious Bedouin people in the deserts, how covered up they are. See, this idea They remind this, me of the little people in Star Wars that were in the sand with the, the Ewoks, red eyes, the red eye people. The Jawas. The yes. Jawas. The Jawas. <laughs> the Jawas. That's right. And so this this stuff all has a apart and we've got to understand this is why I do that show Prima Donnas of the Gutter with Amy D understanding how garb how a, how adornment has structured our way of life what is this about fashions and in, in oh, this girl. season and that season you know what i'm saying this that is, is huge it's a huge it, topic it oh it's major i mean that's why it's never over but we need to understand that we're driven into these modes of being for a reason it's not just willy-nilly this is all constructed and there is a congruence behind the scene oh yeah the, the devil scenes. does wear prada well you know we certainly could pull up to that and there's and, but also and i would like to point out the zoolander series is a documentary it is very serious Watch it and try not to laugh and look at it with your eyes and ears, if you know what I mean. Zoolander is very deep, kids. I've, I've not watched that series. No, I've never seen it either. I didn't even know it was a series. Well, it's, it's at two least movies. two films. Two movies, yeah. yeah. But oh, it might be three. I don't remember. The franchise. I've got you. Yeah, the movies. I did Mila see Mila Jovovich one. is in it, and she is a girl. <laughs> I love me some Mila. I love the gifs from it, though, for sure. Like the, I feel like I'm taking crazy pills. 
<laughs> well, you understand that many models become secret agents, right? I oh, mean, yeah, in real life. I, you know what? I learned that. So, uh, God, I don't remember when, 80s or 90s. Uh, Chuck Barris, the guy from the Gong Show. Definitely, 100%. Wrote a Look book called, uh, God, something, Atlanta. Confessions of a Dangerous Mind, I think it was called. I believe it. I uh, believe that. And it. I read that book and where he details that the CIA approached him and suggested that they take the dating game winners, contestant winners, on trips overseas to places where they had business to do. I think they made a movie out of it. It wasn't bad, but the book It was a good movie. I yeah. enjoyed it immensely. The book uh was was better, of course, but Of course. But, but I read say. that, you know, 20 years before the movie came out, even longer probably. But that's when I, you know, at that point in my life as a teenager, I'm like, "Oh, wow. <laughs> this shit probably goes on all everywhere." And many celebrities are also hookers they're very very high highly paid but they're agents like i think this is just a hypothesis like taylor swift is probably an assassin just a hypothesis <laughs> well there's a lot of ways we could look at an assassin and remember we're looking at new rules to the game so yeah i can 100 percent pull up to that Absolutely. Because what's going on with her music? She's mind and training people. She's leading people to the kill, a kill, some sort of kill, just like so many of them. And you get people emotionally involved, which is what she's done. And um, it's same with Gaga. You, there's so much to be said about Gaga. Gaga is a well of 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 something to dive into. But it, there's a brain entrainment that goes on. And they will follow. It's the golden calf. And, you know, I'm not saying, I'm not, I'm not saying, I'm not trying to be judgmental here. I'm just pointing out the obvious, what I think is the obvious. And I think it's when we need to look at ourselves more clearly, if we're really, truly in the state of like worshiping others in the world, especially the ones that the stars they put out before us. Now it's the influencers. If you notice, it's turned into this organic move to the trying to be a fake movement towards the folk. It's a, it's a, it's a misdirect here. It's not, we see it with all these that were what we once thought were really great. I guess truthers that are no longer, really great they turned into cults and i would call it an an inversion a classic inversion yes it, but still it's still this bait them and get them in and then take them to the cleaner one way or another out to lunch you know what i'm saying so spiritually i'm talking <laughs> spiritually here drain them of everything again it's the podlings it's a, the wonderful little like little pagan podlings like <laughs> in their in their in their thing doing their thing with all the really great stuff and they were just so easy to ensnare and get in the chair and take out their life force their essence and and then they're enslaved and through the the through manipulating something as powerful as a crystal shard that once was whole, that separated the whole realm and created the division in the realm between the light and the dark. Star Wars, anyone? And the dark crystal. Well, that's what I'm talking about, <laughs> yeah, the dark that's crystal. What I'm seeing in my head. Yeah, as you yeah. say. So with this said though, I think we've we definitely made up for being late. Oh, I hope so. I've really enjoyed myself yeah. personally. Yeah. <laughs> it's such a pleasure uh cult priestess to have you on you're just you're fun and um yeah it's just a pleasure and of course i need to get you on the salon as well it's been on my agenda a long time i, I only book a week ahead now because it's too much otherwise so keep an eye out girl there's i think we're going to break down a series and then you come to the salon and we'll chit chat over there too that sounds like a ton of fun. Thank you. Cool. And, and thank you, Jerry. Oh, for, yeah, you're welcome. So attentive. Very kind of you. And I want to thank everybody for coming in the chat. That I've been reading the chat, and it has been on fire tonight. Thank you so much for that. 
And thanks for letting me express myself because I'll just explode if I don't get to. And Nish, I really feel like I've gotten some blessings from your spirit tonight. And I want to thank you. For no, that, that was me. <laughs> you are the Jerry's operator. Just... <laughs> uh, well, I want to thank you. I, I always feel like I get blessings in return and you bring so much. I, you, I always learn. I'm always here to learn. Let's. So, how do people find you? You okay. know, how can they access you, girl? Excellent. So, you can find me at occultpriestess.com and you can set up an appointment. You can make donations, whatever you prefer. And I do have, I've been on the internet for over 20 years, maybe 25 years. So, just put in occult priestess in quotes and try to get past the costume of Halloween that has my name now, unfortunately. So usually that's going to show up. I do have a YouTube channel. I have a rumble channel. I have a bitch you channel and I am on Rockfin, and that's where all my stuff goes and a lot of exclusive stuff. So that's rockfin.com slash occult priestess. And you can see in the chat replay, I put in a bunch of my links at Occult Priestess on Twitter, please. I love it when you follow me because I want to know what you think because I don't always know what topics to cover. But when I do get feedback, then I can really attack a topic full on because you kind of have to ask questions to get the truth out of me. It's really hard for me to sit here with a blank slate and say, okay, what do they need to know? How do I know what you need to know? You need to tell me what you need to know. Okay, thanks, guys. <laughs> excellent god damn it okay there we go unmuted thank you everybody for uh for tuning in um not sure when we'll be back sometime in july i need to book somebody so got nothing planned anyway have a great we night have people in the mix everyone Don't we do be worried. we just got to get them on the books that, and there are that, a couple of people actually on the books chair uh, there's one that i haven't booked yet but never mind Thanks, everybody. We will see you when we see you. Take care.